New Central Library Architectural Services. Good morning. I'm Don Berry, President of the Wichita Library Foundation. Mayor, members of the City Council, citizens and staff, thank you for the opportunity to present at this time an item which seeks the Council's approval for funding of our next design phase for a new central library. It was last May that this Council approved a contract with GLMV Architects for design services and development. This process also included an initiative to reconnect with the community through a series of public meetings or design charrettes while staying targeted on a $30 million construction budget. <coughs> we learned two things from this group of public meetings. One, confirmation that the infrastructure of the current building is no longer suitable for a modern library and if we went the rehabilitation route, there would be limited net gain and the building would remain a space that competes with Century Two. We believe that the building can be adapted to a meeting and convention space that is a companion to Century Two and one that would revenue, uh, generate revenue for the city. Two, the public wants Wichita to have a modern central library that can evolve technologically and become a community space for the 21st century. Since May, the team has been working hard on those two points while remaining stewards of the budget. To that end, here's what has happened with the budget as we try to get the most library for the money. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. The current project budget, as shown here, maintains $1.5 million for technology and $2 million for furnishings and equipment. This will ensure that the library fulfills its intended role as an advanced learning center. More specifically, within the budget, you can see that $100,000 has been set aside for technology in children and teens areas, and nearly $200,000 for additional public computing equipment and sufficient funding for the network infrastructure. This will provide the capacity needed to fulfill the demands of the citizens. Across America, there is an excitement about a new age. Technology is creating an evolution from the information age to the knowledge age where learning and creativity are driving the economy. Nowhere is this shift being recognized and embraced more than in our public libraries. This is most eloquently stated in report of the Aspen Institute in conjunction with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on Public Libraries, which was published just recently. This report comes from a multi-stakeholder forum exploring new thinking on U.S. public libraries with the goal of fostering concrete actions to support and transform libraries for a more diverse, mobile, and connected society. We know the Council has been presented with the Aspen Report, but just to touch on some of the key findings. Libraries today remain one of the country's most trusted institutions and therefore well suited as community hubs and learning centers. New modern libraries are seen as the key partners in a community's overall economic and civic health. Strategically, the Aspen Report urges libraries to adopt a value proposition based on three key assets. People, place, and platform. Libraries connect people to the tools of discovery and creativity and librarians are able to curate and share that knowledge. The Aspen Report also urges community leaders to come together with a shared vision that results in great new modern libraries. Locally, here is a list of some of the basic improvements the community can expect. The number of connected terminals will increase from 31 to between 87 and 109. For people who bring their own devices and look for a place to plug in, well, today, right now, that number is only between 14 and 20 seats. It will exceed 120 seats in the new library. Places where groups can hold meetings, both large and small, will go from just four to 25. And yes, 
we are designing a cafe into the new learning center. The Aspen Report is giving us the best thinking on a national level, but we wanted you to hear from the leaders on a local level about their vision for a new central library in Wichita. It's important that we understand that we have to create an infrastructure that supports the kinds of development that will drive the future of the economy. And they aren't the same things that drove the future, that drove the past. And so um, what we're seeing is the quality of life, access to information, uh, the ability to come in contact with people different than yourself who bring different kinds of expertise to the table. Those are the drivers. And when you look at the notion of creating nodes where people can come together, uh, an information center that includes a traditional library but includes a lot more is increasingly becoming part of what we call a collision space in a community and they're very, very important. So uh, I think that, that the ideas behind uh, redoing the Wichita Library to create much more of an innovation space, a space that, that drives the way people can, can get information and, and use information it is really a key component of what this community needs to have and needs to be if it's going to be successful. One thing uh, that we do on a very frequent basis is we direct prospective business owners or people who are in business to the library to do additional uh, research on the market or the industry that they're looking to go into. One of the reasons it's helpful to go to the library to do that, um, as, you're, as you're conducting your research and, and, and going through all of this material, you have the benefit of someone on site uh, who's an expert in terms of doing research uh, who can really help you navigate all of this information. You could do some of this research online, but it would take hours, and to really get down to what you need, uh, it, it's probably more beneficial and more helpful to have someone there helping you, uh, and again, you've got, you've got the benefit of that expert as well as all of this information that it would take a, uh, quite a bit more time to navigate online, and in a lot of cases, there would be an expense associated with the online searches and, and the information you're able to download. In the virtual sense for my elementary student, we have a homeroom teacher that we are accountable to and they provide the lesson plans, but sometimes we need extra resources to go with those lesson plans or we have novels that we choose to read from and we need to be able to come to the public library and check out those novels. Um, or if there's a lesson that's being taught in writing about research and how to use a library when you're doing research and making note cards before you make a speech or a presentation, then we need to use the library for that. There's times we do use the technology um, just because technology has glitches and sometimes we might have an internet or a server issue and we can go to the public library and log on to a computer and still continue our lessons. And not everybody can afford to have technology in their house. Um, so therefore, I think the library always needs to exist as for a place where people can still and go get their information, whether it's through technology or a, text te a touchable book. Honestly, I think books that you hold are better. Because one, iPads or like Kindles or stuff, eventually they'll run out of battery. But a real life book, the only way is either tear or you lose it. That's the only way you can't use it anymore. It really is about being a community center. Uh, it's more than just a piece of literature. For our students, particularly coming from an urban environment, having access to the internet, uh, to that technology, to have a, a space that they can meet and work in small groups, um, to collaborate, which is a key piece of what we're trying to teach them since that's something we hear over and over from the business community that they, they need individuals that are self-learners, can adapt, and the ability to, to collaborate with others. Really to me, I think about a Swiss Army knife. It's got to be able to do a little bit of everything, and it's, it's there to meet the needs of, 
of whatever you need to do, and that's what the library is going to have to be. What it is today may not be what it needs to be 10 years from now, so having that flexibility um, and that, that design around that understanding of change is going to be very important. We definitely are a city under transformation. I mean, if you think about what's happened with all the, the old town development over the last 25 years, even more recently, what's happened with the arena in our downtown, those are huge catalysts in driving us forward. And as you've noted, Project Downtown is a blueprint that's cultivating new opportunities, building upon our successes as a community. So what's driving our downtown right now, notably, is the Union Station project which had the groundbreaking in December and will actually be in full force as we go in to 2015. As you look on down Douglas, you had the recent success of Block 1, which again is the activation of an entire city block, whereas before there was only one viable use in that block and that was the Kansas Health Foundation. Today, Ambassador Hotel, Kansas Leadership Center, a new parking garage. Again, a great synergy that's building. Right across the street, exchange bidding. This project will be go actually under uh, development in 2015. Again, huge transformation of buildings that are both current but also infill development. As you travel on down Douglas, we're looking at what, what's the future? What are the opportunities as we look at our convention center, our performing arts? Huge drivers as we go forward. As you go across the river, we just had this last December the approval of the project plan for River Vista. This is so exciting because it's ground up construction. A lot of the things we've been talking about are the adaptive reuse. This is new construction coming into our, our core in our community. So it's 154 residential units, it's commercial. And as we get to the library site, this is such a dynamic opportunity because what this begins to do is to connect us to the museum district. It connects us to our riverfront. It connects us to Delano. It connects us into the core of our downtown. This all is part of city building. This is building upon our distinctiveness and what, to, what makes our city really attractive for not only retention but recruitment as well. The library is important because it helps us not only capture, if you will, the current opportunities, it also helps us cultivate future opportunities. And so as a city under transformation, that is a dynamic opportunity for us as a community to give really that message, not only both to our community as here locally, but also nationally, that we are about moving forward. This is dynamic. I mean, this downtown, we've seen about $300 million in investment since Project Downtown was uh, implemented in 2010. The library is another part of that exciting chapter of moving our city forward. But the fact is, if we're going to be successful for the future, everybody has to have the opportunity to be engaged. And you have to have those common spaces where that engagement can occur. And so having facilities like a library, uh, particularly a modern library, I'm not talking about a place that just has book stacks. That's important and a value, but it isn't really the core value any longer of these spaces. The core value is the use of information, much of which is going to be electronic. And as you use, use the word, the, the uh, curating of that information, uh, all of that is really crucial if we're going to be successful, but it has to engage the whole community. The idea that we're going to have a knowledge class and they're going to be the only people who know and can access, that, that's, that's really a, a way in which we will fail as a, as a community. This has to be broad-based. And what we've seen from studies now that are being done on cities that are successful is that the more you engage the, po the broader population, the more likely the metropolitan area is to be successful. In our ongoing discussions with you and other leaders, we've been challenged to develop a partnership with the city involving private funds. The Library Foundation is here with an offer today to do just that. As outlined in the Memorandum of Understanding in your agenda packets, the Wichita Public Library Foundation proposes to become your partner in moving this project forward. We're looking at supporting the cost of completing the building and design and construction documents, 500,000 would be payable to the city in 2015. The remaining cost of this work would be paid in 2016 on the condition that bids for the construction of the new library have been solicited prior to the end of 2015. On behalf of the library, it is recommended that the city council approve the funding agreement with the Wichita Public Library Foundation, authorized 
GLMV architects to complete the design development and construction documents and authorize the necessary signatures. And next is my favorite part. I think of it as stump the experts. So with us today is Director of Libraries, Cindy Berner, Tom Montgomery of GLMV Architects, and Brad Lewis of the Sextant Group, who is the project's GWIZ technology guy. Uh, we're here and happy to answer your questions at this time. <laughs> 